Well, uh, let's get to some corporate conversations. We're at the fag end of season. Earnings almost over and done, but we do have some conversations uh, for you around numbers. Kaplan Point came out with a good set for the second quarter. The profit was up 25%. Margins have improved as well to multi-quarter highs. The company has uh, a strong order book in the U.S., market as well. To talk about all of these trends, we have Vivek Parthiban, COO at Kaplan Point with us. Vivek, good morning. Thank you for taking this call. I want to start off with the margin profile because the improvement there looks very, very handsome. I think if I have the right numbers, you've gone to about 34%. Uh, so just explain to us what went into this margin improvement, uh, if there were any one-offs or any sort of, you know, uh, you know single product uh, sort of boosters that kind of came in and whether this level of 34% is sustainable. Yeah, so we've always been at uh, a good EBITDA number uh, throughout uh, over the last few years. Um, of course, in this uh, quarter, there was a couple of things that boosted up the numbers. One of them being we started exporting specialty oncology injectable products to our existing markets. Um, our uh, base business, which involves a lot of these specialty products such as uh, pharmaceutical soft gels, etc., uh, are also contributing well. Um, these are not one time or anything. You also need to factor in Kaplan Sterile's business picking up uh, steam as well. You know, So all of these things combined together, I think uh, you are uh, starting to see that uptick in EBITDA and PAT numbers. I think uh, we would be more comfortable at around 22 to 25% uh, PAT and EBITDA would be around 35% uh, going forward. All right. Uh, hi, Vivek. Good morning. And uh, good to hear that you believe that you know the margins can sustain at these mid-30 levels. So that's the takeaway from what you said. Now, in terms of the U.S. market, uh, last year, I think uh, you did a fair deal. I think grossed around 200 crores of sales from there. At the halfway mark, you're at around 121 crores odd. I think earlier you were mentioning about 300 crores. So tell us about the scalability of the U.S. market. FY24, what do you end at? And for FY25, what are you looking to scale that business to? Yeah, so U.S. business is definitely picking up steam and we're comfortable with that. But uh, we also need to make sure that there is a fair amount of consolidation that happens at the back end. right? So obviously, uh, this is a culmination of efforts from many years ago. It's not that uh, we've gotten one product or two products approved and that's contributing to the sales. So we have a pretty broad uh, portfolio. But what we need to make sure is the scale up is manageable, uh, especially with a high level of compliance. We've been spending quite a, uh, uh, quite a lot of our resources and energy into automating multiple systems, et cetera. So um, we think we can do, uh, because of a smaller base, we think we can do a fairly good number this year and next year as well. But I don't want to put an exact figure to it. We will get there because it's a very dynamic space, the U.S. Uh, business. But we want a, a steady growth, I would say, rather than, uh, rather than going for a sprint at this point. No, but it's already up, uh, you know, 23% in the first half of the year. Uh, the second half is normally better, right? So in all probability, you should be in the vicinity of 280 to 300 crores. Would that be a, a fair guesstimate? That would be the target, yes. That would be the target. And with our new line also commercialized, uh, you can expect um, uh, us to go as close as possible. But once again, uh, as is always the case with uh, pharmaceuticals and especially U.S. in general, compliance is always the mantra and we need to make sure that we're at the top of our game in that. Mm, okay, fair enough. Vivek, then let's talk about the base business I'm in uh, Latin America, which is a lion's share of your revenue. Uh, just tell us what the trends are there. Like, and you mentioned uh, certain oncology products that you're bringing to market. So was that in uh, LATAM? And uh, what's the volume growth? What's the, the revenue growth guidance that you have, which will help us arrive at, you know, also you know, take that to the full year projections uh, for top line overall. How much growth do you expect in FY24? Yeah, so uh, as you know, we've given it in, uh, in the past as well. We've been focused on uh, completing our oncology uh, uh, facility that should happen over the next couple of uh, quarters. Uh, we didn't want to wait for this uh, uh, facility to be completed. So what we've been doing in the past is registering products using uh, contract manufacturers. So that business has already started now. And uh, overall, company is com continuing to do well. Our business model of being close to the customer and making sure that, you know, our unique, unique business model is uh, catering to the bottom of the pyramid. All of these things are continuing to, uh, uh, you know, augur well for us. I would say anywhere between 15 to 17 percent overall growth is what we are targeting for the overall company. Okay, 15 to 17 percent growth uh, for the year, right? Correct. Yes, for the year. Okay. All right. So that should roughly be in that vicinity of around 1700, 1700, and 1700 to 1800 crores, I think by the end of the year is what we're looking at. Uh, Vivek, also the cash in the books, well, that uh, gives a good amount of cushion. How do you plan on utilizing that? What's the CAPEX plan for the year? And any other plans, maybe some inorganic growth with the cash you have? 
Yeah, so we're not against uh, inorganic growth. We're actually constantly on the lookout. Uh, we keep getting some of these things on our table. We need to make sure that it sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, it grows within our line of uh, interest, right? So uh, we don't want to be stretching our bandwidth too thin and then taking on more than we can chew. Obviously, we are at the fag end of, uh, of a lot of capex that uh, is going on. And as is always the case with pharmaceuticals, there is a gestation period when uh, the OPEX also starts to come in, uh, you know. So we want to be uh, sitting on uh, a good amount of cash. And we are actually, you know, this is testament to our business model as well. The cash flow that uh, you see, I would say amongst peers, we're probably one of the better uh, performers. But again, like I said, we're not against uh, anything inorganic. I think at some level, as the base starts to grow, this is something for us to genuinely look at. But it has to fit in with our line of uh, growth. So any, anything on the horizon, in the vicinity, anything that you're finding interesting? And also, which segments would you look out for if you're looking at in inorganic growth? Uh, so Latin America is continuing to be a very important piece for us. So something, uh, if, if it is available over there, especially in some of our key markets like Mexico and Brazil, would be very welcome. Um, at this point, nothing uh, advanced. Uh, we'll let you know if there is some uh, progress. Okay, we'll uh, wait up for that one, Vivek. Thank you very much for giving us an idea about the business trends right now. So largely looking uh, good, steady, strong for Kaplan Point. We